All right, Shalom Israel, going back into the history. Um, I told you that I was going back into Genesis 36 because there's more that we can we can get out of there in the way of information. I'm going to start at 36 and 12. We already know from earlier I read um, Genesis, the 25th chapter. We know Isaac is the father of Esau, right? Now, Esau is the father of different nations too or different tribes right um genesis 36 and 12 and timnah was concubine to eliphaz esau's son and she bare to eliphaz amalek these were the sons of ada esau's wife so who's the grandson of esau amalek all right now let's get an understanding now now, now let's let's find out who descends from amalek Let's see. First Samuel fifteen and eight. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. So Agag was a descendant of Amalek. So you have Isaac, Esau, Amalek. Then Agag, right? Pay very close attention. Very, very close attention, guys. Because it's going to get even more intense. It's going to get extremely intense. Book of Esther. Chapter 3, verse 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Amadatha, the Agagite, and audienced, audienced him and set his seat above the princes that were with him. Salak, this is, uh, this is written in Middle Late English. So it's not Old English, but it's Middle Late English. So, you know, <laughs> you got to bear with me with some of these words. But it says... Let's read it again. Hamadatha, the son of um, 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 Salat Haman, the son of Amadatha, the Agagite. So let's go back in the chronology, right? Isaac, Esau, Amalek, Agag, Haman. Now, Haman is descendant from Agag, right? Who's a descendant of Amalek, who's a descendant of Esau. Now, we're going to have to go back into the Apocrypha. And read the same book. Remember, the, Esther continues in the Apocrypha. Chapter 16, verse 10. Chapter 16, Esther 16, verse 10. For Amon, which is actually Haman, same, same name, a Macedonian... The son of Amadatha being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood. Why is he a stranger from the Persian blood? Because he's not Persian. He's an Edomite. So Haman is an Edomite. And he's also a Macedonian. Keep that in mind that, that Haman is a Macedonian. Just to, just, to, just to kind of go, you know, give you a, a further deep understanding on it. Let's go back again. Because this, this is stupid. Isaac, his son Esau, Esau's grandson Amalek, Amalek's descendant Agag. Agag's descendant is Haman or Amon. Depends on if you read it in the Apocrypha or in, or in the, the Old Testament. But it's Haman or Amon. Now, Haman, who's a descendant of Esau, is a Macedonian. Now, who else was a Macedonian? And it happened, 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. And it happened that after Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Ketum, so he came out of a, a, out of a land that was originally ruled by children of, of uh, Japhet, who came out of the land of Ketum, had smitten Darius, the king of Persia. This is Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian. Now, Later on, the same people that Philip 
Remember what we read in uh, Maccabees five and three. We're gonna get it again. Now, let's just let's just let's just backtrack. Isaac, Esau, Amalek, Agag, Haman. Haman is a, is a Macedonian. Philip is a Macedonian. Philip's son is Alexander the Great, so-called, who's a Greek. He's known to be Greek in history. And remember that the Maccabees were fighting the Greeks. I'm going to go back to a scripture I previously read. Maccabees 5 and 3, 1 Maccabees. Then Judas, Judas Maccabees, fought against the children of Esau in Idumea. Case closed. You know, you could really, I don't, I don't have to say anything else. I really don't have anything else to say. I mean, I do, but I, don't, I shouldn't have to. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Now remember, I'm um, sorry, uh, 12 verse 3, 12 verse 9. And that the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is it talking about the old serpent? It's talking about the serpent in the book of Genesis, which is an ancestor of the so-called white man. It was a person. It wasn't actually a fucking serpent, a snake. It was a person with the attributes of a serpent because they, they were like a serpent. Just like Yahweh Shai called Herod a fox. Right? So it says, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Meaning they were brought to a low state. All right? So that's it on that. Let's go back to Revelation 3. First book of Moses, commonly called Genesis. And the Lord power said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. So that they're, they're lower than animals, the so-called white man. That's why Job says he doesn't even want to set them with the dogs of his flock. The dogs are higher than the so-called white race. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put an em enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So that's why it said later on, and, and Jacob's hand took hold on Esau's heel. See, you, you, can, you can fool people that don't study. You can't fool us, because we study. We study, we read, we show, we, we, we study to show ourselves approved. We don't just come out and, and just talk out our ass. So it says, uh, um, 2 Ezra 6 and 9, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other question Esdras asked thou not. All right, that's that's pretty simple. You know, that's pretty straightforward. Now, to your argument about uh about how Esau was able to have children with Canaanites and even an Ishmaelite, and and how you so lovely put it. But what? How did you do it? Arabia, fucking gay ass singing nigga. You know, um, that doesn't. You, you don't know the power of the Lord. The Lord can keep somebody as leprous if they want. You know, white people have children with so-called black people all the time. You know, that 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 doesn't mean. That doesn't mean anything as in terms of uh you know the the child skin skin tone you know and, and also um I mean it's 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 the mark of Cain also but anyway I mean well the mark of Cain I'm going to say this before you say it through faith we believe that the mark of Cain was leprosy because when you actually read it which I'm going to right now actually it had to be a, a 
a mark that was very profound that he couldn't cover up. And what else would make other people run away from him as opposed to kill his ass? All right, so it's uh, Genesis chapter 4, and I'm going to start at 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. It would be your dumbass, so-called white man, to, to kill somebody and say, Oh, everybody in the world is going to hate me. I, I can't bear this punishment. It says, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a bag vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slave Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Salah. Sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man finding him should kill him. So if everybody in the world is, is, is brown skinned to one degree or another, because Arabs aren't even really dark. You have dark ass Arabs over there, but you know, like, like the like the Orientals, a lot of them ain't dark, and I'm not just talking about the ones that was raped by uh ancestors was raped by um Genghis Khan. That's an actual thing. You know, you can have a light skinned seed come from dark skinned people. When you introduce Esau to it, of course that happens. It happened to the Chinese. That's why they're the palest among those fucking uh um, orientals but anyway I digress so this had to be a mark so profound that it made him not uh, it made people not even want to touch him right wouldn't that make sense but then again this guy says we don't make sense when we can prove what we talk about alright but you know I'm just a, I'm just a, a nutcase, you know. And, and what, like he said, uh, you know, I believe in a dummy doctrine, but I can actually prove the so-called dummy doctrine. Now, First John chapter three verse twelve. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Now, are you going to say Adam was uh, was a wicked one because Cain was of Adam, right? But. There's something different about Cain. Because it's not talking about Adam was the wicked one. It says Cain who was of that wicked one. And slew his brother. But you know the, the point of the scripture. Because it goes on and says because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. But it says not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Now, when you go into the um, book of Malachi again, it says Esau is the border of wickedness, the edge of wicked. You can't get more wicked than them. If you try to be the most wicked, you got to do wicked, wicked earth shit than Esau. Plain and simple. So that cuts you. Let's see. What else? Let's go into some history. Let's see. Antiquities. Antiquities. Four. Let me see, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. My bad, y'all. I wrote it down. I wrote down the uh oh I'm sorry. First let me let me even let me start by telling you what book I'm reading from. This is Josephus, the complete works. Alright, and 
it goes into Esau and Edom. Let's see, was it 211? Antiquities 211. Let's see if that's what I'm trying to bring up. Because we could go, we could go back and forth with you with the history, bro. It ain't nothing. Two, 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 one, I think it was. Oh, no, that ain't it. It's a lot. A lot of these, uh, you know, this ain't the scriptures, so it's not as easy to navigate. Hold up one second. I. Let me look under I. I do means. Here we go. 441. That's what I was looking for. Antiquities 441. Yeah, forgive me. I should have bookmarked it. Four four three. Now we want four. Four four one. No, let's talk about Moses. I do means. Oh, War of the Jews, 441. Salak. Because it's split up. You got War of the Jews and uh and Antiquities of the Jews. So let's go back to how these these uh dirt bags became so called Jewish. 220. Here we go. Four, four, one. Message to tell them circumstances. Oh, here we go. They also charged the messenger. Oh. So, look, you know what? Let me go to, to what I what I definitely know. Because that's not going into anything that would uh would define who they are or aren't. But I'm gonna go to Antiquities 13. Nine and one. Thirteen. Nine and one. Here we go. Beautiful. Hyrcanus took also Dora and Marissa, cities of Idumia, and subdued all the Idumians and permitted them to stay in that country if they would circumcise their genitals and make use of the laws of the Jews. So he, he forced them to keep Israelite customs, right? It says, and they were so desirous of living in the country of their forefathers that they submitted to the use of circumcision and the rest of the Jewish ways of living, at which time, therefore, this befell them that they were hereafter no other than Jews. So these Idumeans, they wanted to be Jews so bad that they didn't want to hear anything. They were Jews in their mind. But anyway, I'm going to go to part four now. Shalom.